Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Bethany. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify, oh, magnify, oh, magnify. Come on, won't you worship him on this morning? Magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. We came to church today, and since we're here and he gave us the agility of our limbs, and we have the agility of our hands and our legs, we may as well give God some praise. Amen, amen. Why? Because this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice in spite of my situation, in spite of what I'm going through, in spite of what I may feel like, in spite of what's headed for me when I leave here, I will rejoice and be glad in him. Anybody just glad on this morning? Don't fool me now, just glad because he's God. Glad because he woke you up this morning and he started you on your way. Amen. I'm just glad because the God that we serve gave me another chance. He gave me another chance by waking us up this morning. A chance to forgive. Another chance to love. Another chance to get it right. That that we didn't get right on yesterday. And so we have assembled here on this day to give God praise. We've set aside this time to give God worship. And I don't know about you, but I will refuse to let the rocks cry out in my praise, in my place, because God is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy, hallelujah, of all the glory and all the honor. That's all right. Y'all can sit on me, but I'm going to keep on until he comes on in the room. It doesn't matter about me, but I just con I'm concerned about you. I I want you to worship him. I want you to get to know him. I want you to praise him on this morning. Amen. To those who are joining us online, we welcome you on today. Those who are seated here, you look so beautiful. Amen. I'm Reverend Tisdale, and I am here in place of Reverend Sean on this morning. We want to say good morning to you, and we just want to wish you the best worship, that when you leave this place, you feel better than when you came in. If you will, at this time, please stand. We're going to follow our order of service. You'll see on your program our call to worship, responsive reading. I'll read the portion that says leader, you'll read the portion that says people, and at the end we'll all read together. Oh God, because you are the source of all life and love and being, we call you creator. Because we know the history of your presence among your and honor your mighty works among them because you hold us up and give us strength and courage when we are weak and in need because beyond pain lies your promise of all things made new because you are the means of liberation and the way to freedom. We call you Redeemer. Let us all say blessing and power, glory and honor be unto you, our God. Amen. 
we come to you on this morning. God, we are just glad to give you praise because in all things, we ought to give your name praise. And so God, we now invite you into this place. God, we invite you into this worship. God, we invite you into our hearts. We invite you into the voices of those that will sing, into the voices of those that will pray. God, we just need your power. We need your glory. We need you, oh God, like never before. And so, oh God, because you are our sustainer, God, because you are our provider, God, teach us how to pray. And in your words, we say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. in our congregational hymn that can be found in your hymn book, number 348, Revive Us Again.
Again, anybody need to be revived on this morning? Come on now, y'all don't fool me. Y'all look like you need to be revived on this morning. Amen. Come on and revive us again. Amen. We're going to now have our welcome. I don't know if there's anyone slated to do so, but if not, I will take that opportunity. I just want to say welcome. Welcome to our visitors, to our visiting pastor, although you are not a visitor, <laughs> you are right at home, pastor. We're glad to have you here. We're glad to have, to, if we have any visitors, if you just, at this time, we're not going to ask you to speak, if you just stand, that we can acknowledge you. If we have any visitors online, we want to welcome you to the Bethany Baptist Church where our senior pastor is the Reverend Dr. Timothy Atkins Jones. And in his absence, we want to say that you are welcome in this place. We are a warm, we are a friendly church. We want to, I'd like to extend it from our ministerial staff or from our diaconate, the deacons and the trustees here. We would love to have you to come and be a part of this ministry. But if you're just passing by. We ask that you would tell somebody else about this place and we hope to give you an experience that you can share with somebody else. Is that all right? Amen, amen, amen. We're going to have our announcements at this time. Ward of North New Jersey and pastored by the Reverend Dr. Timothy Adkins Jones. Our mission is to recruit, equip, and deploy witnesses for Christ. If you're watching virtually, we pray that our virtual ushers will help you to feel right at home. Whether you are seeking a place for worship, spiritual guidance, or a loving community to call home, we invite you to join us here at Bethany, where the doors of the church are always open to all. Here are this week's announcements. Join us all August as we continue our summer preaching series. This month, we welcome Reverend Renee Brown Johnson of Bethany Baptist Church, Pastor Darren Monroe of Chosen Generations Ministries, Reverend Dr. Glenmore Bembry of First Baptist Petty Memorial Church, and Reverend L.D. West of Elmwood United Presbyterian Church. We hope to see you in worship this month. Please note that this month, the church hours will be from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. from Monday to Thursday, and from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Fridays. 
Any rehearsals will take place as regularly scheduled. The daily Matthew 6-9 prayer call will continue. Just dial 1425-436-6372. And when asked to enter an access code, enter 146003. In addition, all are welcome to join us on Wednesdays at noon throughout the summer for our in-person midweek worship service. You are invited to join Bethany Cares Incorporated for the 19th Annual Golf Classic on August 22nd. This will be a fun-filled day of networking and challenging golf in support of their mission as the nonprofit arm of Bethany Baptist Church. The proceeds from this event will benefit the Freedom School Summer Academic Enrichment Program. Both golfers and non-golfers are welcome to participate. Please support this important event. For more information, you may call 908-953-9852. Please note that our recording schedule has changed. Please submit your announcements by the end of the day on Thursday so that they may be recorded on Sunday. To stay connected with our very active church and our recurring events, you may now text BBC to 33222 or follow us on social media at Bethany Baptist Newark. In addition, if you feel led to join our growing community, just text Join BBC to 33222. Now back to today's service. A few more announcements to add on to that. We want to just give a shout out to our sister Dorian uh, for working with our youth. We had a youth, amen, amen. We want to thank all of the young people that attended uh, the events that were hosted um, on this week. And so are we, are we glad about our youth? You know, our youth could be doing anything else. Can we give our youth just a little bit more than that? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, amen. Amen, so our sister Dorian, we wanna say thank you and God bless you and you know, all of your journey, we love you. You know that my son loves you. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. This is the best time. Y'all, it's offering time. Hold up. Let's try that one more time. <laughs> I said, it's offering time, Bethany. <laughs> Amen. We have a few ways that you can give here at the Bethany Baptist Church, and you'll see them on your screen. Those of you that are online, you can view, you can give online, you can, uh, there's a cash app and there's a text. I didn't remember all of those numbers last night, so y'all forgive me. I just know that it, it does work. And also, if you just want to bring your offering into the church, then we welcome you, and um, you can observe the church hours where you can drop your offering off, okay? So at this time, we're going to have our offering. Now, if you have your offering, you don't go around. If some of you are new, we don't go around. So if you have your offering in your hand, we just ask that you hold it up and the ushers will come around to you. This is the time for us that we can give a portion back to God as he has given unto us. We can't even give God enough. How many of you know you can't pay God for what he's done for you? Some of us ought not to have been here. The doctors gave us up. They told us that we wouldn't make it through the night. Our diagnosis wasn't good. We should, that heart attack should have taken us out. But because of God, songwriter said, you can't beat God giving no matter how you try. And so we ought to get excited when we have an opportunity just to give a little portion back to him. Amen. So we'll follow the instruction of our ushers at this time and we'll be led in song by our choir. Come on, put those hands together, everybody. Mm -hmm. Every praise is to our God with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, sing. 
Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every word of worship, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, let's take it up, sing. Every praise is to our God. Every word of every worship, every word of worship with one accord. Every because everything we do he has given to us everything we can give back to him is because we give him praise amen every praise come on one more time oh every praise 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 come on can you rejoice in what the Lord Yeah. 
God, we're so thankful that every praise is to you. God, now I ask that you would bless this offering. God, the portion that we have. God, that we return back to you. God, it seems so minimal for what you've done to us. God, I ask that you bless it. Ten times over. Oh, God, bless each household represented that they find the household a little sweeter than when they left. Oh God, I ask that you would do a new thing in the lives of those that give, and then God, those who desired but did not have. Oh God, I ask that you bless them even the more as our prayer in the precious name of Jesus, amen. Our scripture reading by our deacon Deborah Doremus. The scripture for today's worship is Psalms 146, 1 through 10, from the New King James Version. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man, in whom there is no help. His spirit departs, he returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who have made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who execute justice to the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He believes the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're just going to center ourselves as we have come to a time of altar prayer. Now, our altar is not open, but the altars of our heart are. So we ask that you take this time, whatever your posture for prayer, whether it's standing or kneeling where you are. If you'd like to be seated, you can do that too. This is our time where we can talk to God. But more than that, it's the time where God can talk to us. There's a little song that's in my spirit. It says, praise is what I do when I want to be close to you. I lift my hands and praise praise is who i am i'm gonna praise him while i can i bless him at all times 
times for I vow to praise him through the good and the bad I'll praise him whether happy or sad to pray but I just I just want him here for a second can we do that again praise is what I do when I want to be close to you come on and help me yeah I lift my hand anybody got a hand come on come on and come on yeah 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 right there right there <laughs> right there right there right there there he is praise is who I am I'm gonna praise him while I can. I'll bless him at all times. For I vow to. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Through the good and the Oh God, we got to make space for you. <laughs> Every now and then, oh God, we, we've got to ask you to come on in and help us. And so God, we, we thank you that you stepped in the room. We thank you, oh God, that you canceled our assignment, but that you fell in this place on this morning. And God, now somebody can receive a breakthrough and somebody can hear you, oh God. And somebody who needs delivering can be delivered, oh God. So we want to start off by saying thank you. But now, oh God, in the midst, in the midst of it all, we, we want to give you thanks and praise. Because God, you said in your word that it's not determined by what we're going through. It's not determined by our financial status. It's not determined by our health record. But you said in all things, we ought to give you thanks and praise. And so God, now that you stepped in the room and canceled our assignment, we want to be obedient to you. And we want to give you thanks and praise. God, what do we thank you for? We thank you, oh God, because you woke us up this morning. We thank you, oh God, that you started us on our way. We thank you, oh God, that the blood is still yet running warm in our veins. We thank you, oh God, that we were saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. We thank you, oh God, that when we were sinking deep in sin, oh, very deeply stained within, God, we were seeking to rise no more, but the master of the sea, you, you heard our despairing cry, and from the waters, you lifted us, and we're safe because we're in your arms. We want to say thank you. 
<laughs> now, oh God, we want to give you praise. God, we, some of us are praising our way through and some of us are praising our way out and some of us are praising our way over. Some of us are praising just because, but God, we want to give you praise. God, because you're worthy of the praise. God, you're worthy of the honor. If, even if you didn't do anything else for us, God, you've done enough, God, and you're worthy, oh God, of our praise. If we had 10,000 tongues, we could not praise you enough. So now, God, I ask that you would search our hearts. Oh, God, and the songwriter said, if you find anything that shouldn't be, God, take it out, Lord, and, and God, fix it, Jesus. Take out envy and jealousy. Take out discord. Take out hatefulness and despise and take out, oh God, all of those things that are not like you. Oh God, we, we ask you to replace it with love and unity, togetherness, encouragement. Search us, oh God. Search us, oh God, that we might be more like you. Oh God, we need you. Some of us, oh God, are grieving. Some of us have lost loved ones, oh God. Friends and husbands and wives and children. And some of us are grieving, oh God, and we don't know how to get from day to day. If you didn't carry us, we couldn't get over. Oh God, be with us, oh God. Strengthen us. Oh God, comfort us. Comfort that grieving wife. Comfort that grieving husband. Somebody's got to lay their loved one to rest, oh God. Oh God, we want to lift the Thomas family up to you. Oh God, we want to lift up all of the, we want to lift up the family of Dr. Gloria White Allen. Oh God, and all of those who we may have forgotten, those who, whose names are not in our memory, God, you know them all. Somebody's got to sit in the seat to say goodbye. But oh God, we know that on this side is goodbye, but on the other side, oh God, is howdy, howdy. Oh God, I pray for those that are in the hospital. Those who desire to be here today, desire to walk and can't walk, desire to lift their hands and can't raise their hands, desire to be well and they're not well. God, I pray right now. I pray for a miracle. God, I pray for a miracle. God, I pray that you would enter that room, into that surgery room. God, into that bedroom with that sick person. Oh God, I ask that you touch the marriages. Marriages that are in bondage. Oh God, give them new insight. Those single people got it. But more than ever, I ask that you bless our youth. Oh God, restore our youth back to us, oh God. Oh God, I ask that you would send a hedge of protection around them. Cover them with your precious blood. Oh God, I ask that as the school year begins, oh God, that we don't lose our youth to the street and we don't lose our youth to gun violence and we don't lose our youth to drug addiction and to alcoholism. Oh God, I ask that you send an anointing. Oh God, bless the teachers, the principals, all of those in leadership. Then, oh God, before I close this prayer, God, I pray for the church universal. God, we need a revival. Send a revival, Lord. Fresh wind, oh God. That we can hear your voice through the chaos, through the distractions through the internet that we can hear your voice. Give the church your clarity, God, and I ask that you take a seat in the church. God, I pray for this great church, the Bethany Baptist Church. 
I pray for the pastor and his wife and his children in the absence. God, give them sweet rest. That when they come back to this place, they'll have new assignment for us. God, hold us together as leaders. Bind up anything that is not like you is our prayer. God, and because we don't have to wait until the battle is over, we rejoice in what you've already done. We rejoice in what you're doing and we rejoice in what you're going to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Thank God and amen. 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 Bethany, we have a preacher. He's not just a preacher, but he is an anointed man of God. Now, I don't have a bio, but when it comes to the anointing, we don't need a bio. Because God has already ordained, justified, anointed, and appointed him for the task. And so after the musical selection, we're going to hear from our pastor, Darren Monroe. His church is chosen generation, which is right here. And so he has been here before. Let's welcome him warmly. Can we do that, Bethany? Can we just give him a warm welcome? Thank you. Thank you so much. After the next election from the choir, you will hear from this preacher. And I ask that you would pray that God would send a rhema word. I need a word from the Lord today. A word designed just for me. But you know what I like about God? When he designs a word for me, he can design it for you too at the same time. Amen. So after this next election, we'll hear from our pastor, Darren Monroe.
take a whole lot to get me to praise him but when I just begin to think of the goodness of God and all that he has done there is something on the inside that cries out hallelujah and I'm just thanking God for saving us amen good morning Bethany are you glad to be in the house of worship on this morning that's seven people are you glad to be in the house of worship this is where we come corporately to meet God and I got good news for you you won't leave here the same way that you came in if you come in expecting you will receive just what you expected I'm a firm believer that expectancy is the atmosphere for miracles and I don't know about anybody else here but I need God to do something different in my life I need something new glory to God I need something great in my life I I need God to show up like he's never shown up before. We give honor to the Spirit of God and to this great, great house, Bethany Baptist Church of Newark, New Jersey. We're just so privileged and honored to be with you on this morning. We honor your great pastor, Pastor Atkins Jones. Come on, can we put our hands together and give praise for he and his family? Great man of God, my brother and my friend. And I am so humbled, deeply humbled, to be able to stand here this morning to grace this pulpit to all of the ecclesia and the leaders and um, the leadership of this ministry to, to these in, incredible Levites I mean y'all are bad bad I mean I y'all come on now y'all got y'all got to give y'all band and y'all singers a, a hand clap a lot of churches don't have a, a full band and uh, especially during the summertime, you, and y'all still got singers going on. After COVID, a lot of things changed. So 
you know, don't stop praising God. Amen. I know sometimes we think it's the little things, but we thank God for everything that he's doing. Glory to God. So let's give God praise for everyone that is in the house on today. Glory to God. I'm not going to be before you long. I am no stranger here. I feel like I'm at home. Um, I'm, I traveled a long way. I just walked across the street and, uh, you know, had to get here this morning to be with you and to share what the Lord has given me for you on this morning. There is a word from the Lord. And I thank God that in spite of all that we see going on around us, God is still speaking. Amen. And um, all of us have a testimony. Anybody here have a testimony? You know, we don't do testimony services like we used to. You can't trust everybody with a testimony. Everybody can't handle the mic anymore. Amen. But if you don't mind, I want you to just lean to your left or your right and just tell that person next to you at least just one thing that God has done for you this week. Come on, just one, just one thing. Everybody got a testimony. He woke me up this morning. Amen. He, he got me through this week. I didn't kill nobody on my job this week. Glory to God. I, I survived it. Hallelujah. I'm still saved. Glory to God. Amen. That's a testimony. Amen. We're going to take our thought this morning from the book of Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew, chapter number 14, beginning at verse number 22. St. Matthew, chapter 14, beginning our reading at verse number 22. And I'm going to be reading from the New Living Translation. And you're hearing. And the word of the Lord reads, immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. After sending the people home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from the land. For a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, Tell me to come to you, walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? Then the disciples worshiped him. You really are the son of God. The word of God for the people of God. And let everyone say amen. And I want to use for a thought on this morning in your hearing that there is a lesson in the storm. There's a lesson in the storm. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for a word that is being released in this place on this morning, God. And we're asking God that you would just decrease me, that you may increase. Father, we praise you in advance for what you are about to do in our lives. God, we love you. And we give you all the glory. So now, Father, this is your time. You speak to us like only you can. In that name that is above every name, and that is Jesus, let the people of God say amen. Amen and amen. There is a lesson in the storm. You know, it has never been promised to us that life would always be easy. 
there's a song we used to sing years ago that would start off with this, that life is filled with what? Swift transitions. Things happen so quickly. In this season that we're in, you can go to bed one night on top of the world and wake up in the morning with the world on top of you. Things are happening so quickly, so drastically. So many changes are occurring in all of our lives. But in spite of that statement that I just made, I'm glad to know that there is a word from the Lord that says, all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose. And as I begin to make that statement, I begin to understand that this is really telling me that God is intentional. We serve a God that does things intentionally. Even when we don't always understand it, he has a purpose in everything that he does. God is so intentional that when he does something, we say it's intentional. But can I share it this way? Sometimes we think that God hasn't done nothing. Even when God does nothing, it's intentional. Because there are some times when God won't say a word to us because there are some tests that you got to go through that you've got to learn some things for yourself. Because how many of y'all know that whenever you're taking a test, you can't talk during a test? Tests are designed to find out what you have learned and what you know. And sometimes God will put us in positions so we can use what he's already showed us through his word and begin to function in ways, oh God, that, that he has already told us to do. And he gives us an opportunity to flow in his word. We find here that even in this particular situation, in this text, we see that Jesus and his disciples have just come off an incredible crusade. They've just fed 5,000 multitude. You know the story about the two fish and the five loaves of bread. And after they had this crusade, we see that Jesus tells his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side. And I'm going to dismantle the crowd. And we find out that he instructs his disciples to, to leave him while he uh, isolates himself and goes and has prayer. The one thing I want you to begin to see and begin to understand is this, that first, Jesus makes his disciples to get into the boat. It is a command, it is, a, it is an instruction. You would think that he would say, well, let's, let us all get in this boat together and go to the other side, but he tells them to get into the boat while he stays back. While the disciples are in the boat, a storm arises while they're out on the sea. They find themselves in a moment of darkness. It's the fourth watch of the night. It's about 3 a.m. in the morning. It's dark. They, there's no lights out there. The winds are blowing. The storm is raging. And they find themselves in a situation where fear begins to creep into their hearts. Not only are they in a moment of darkness, but they are in a moment of depletion. For they are tired and weary because they've been fighting through this storm. Not only are they in a moment of darkness, not only are they in a moment of depletion, but they are in a moment of despair because of the storm that they are currently in. They want to give up because they're tired of fighting. How many of us here have been in a situation where it seems like we are in a storm, one of the worst storms in our lives, and we feel like we are in a place of darkness where nobody can understand us. There's nobody we can turn to. There's nobody we can call up. However, we have, ever, have we ever been into a place where it seems like we are in a moment of depletion, where we're tired of this? Is, is there anybody who's ever been there that they're tired of going through the, the, the repetitiveness, going through the same things over and over, dealing with the same type of people over and over again, dealing with the same issues in the church over and over over and again it seems like there's a storm going on same situations are coming up time after time after time so many of us are in despair when it seems like God is not answering our prayers and we hear people in our ears saying why do you keep praying why do you keep trusting this God that you cannot see why are you wasting your time going to church? Why are you wasting your time in this relationship? 
Aren't you tired of the storm? But I got good news for you. There's a lesson in the storm. There's some things that God wants to get to us in the storm. My first point on today is that the storm reveals his purpose for our lives. Storms are inevitable. Sometimes they're hard to get through. They're hard to handle. They're impossible to cope with. They're difficult to navigate our way through. While we're going through the storm, it seems like we're up against the wind. We're up against the waves. We're up against our environment. And it seems like everything is trying to keep us from moving forward. I found out in this scripture that normally, watch this, it seems like we go into storms when we are disobedient. We like to say that, well, they're going through what they're going through because they were not obeying God. But I have a question for you. What do you do when God tells you to go forward and the storm arises? They didn't enter this storm because of disobedience. They went into this storm because of obedience. Jesus told them to get into the boat and go to the other side. That was so contrary to me. I couldn't figure this one out. I, I would think that if God is telling me to do something, it's all going to work out. If God is instructing me to move forward, yeah, there's going to be money falling off the trees and Kool-Aid coming out the faucet because God told me to go to the other side. In our society today, when God tells us to do something, most of y'all would have posted it. Jesus just hooked me up just told me to go to the other side. There's a blessing on the other side. I've got favor because God told me to go forward. But what do you do when God gives you instruction to move forward and a storm arises? Proverbs 16 and verse 9 says, In his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. I'm glad to know that I'm in the purpose of God. And that when a storm arises, sometimes the storms may arise because the enemy is trying to hinder your progress. All of us will have to go through a storm. The question is not when it will come, not how it will come, but how will you navigate your way through tough times. May I share with you that sometimes a storm causes frustration that causes you to move forward. Sometimes we need a good storm to cause us to pray. We need a good storm to cause us to get back to God. We need a good storm that causes us to worship. We need a good storm to cause us to praise. I thank God that this storm that I'm going through is not to destroy me, but it is to build me up and to give me strength for my tomorrow. I thank God that God is even with me while I'm going through the storm. Oh my God, I'm reminded of a time, amen, that I, you know, I, my, my, my wife, she gave birth to our baby, but you, you know, there was a lot of pain going on. There was a lot of pain going on inside of her womb, and what was happening was a pain was caused because that which was inside of her started to outgrow the space that it was in so the pain was an indicator the baby was saying this pain is an indication that I've got to move to another level that I'm too big for this space that I'm in I want to encourage somebody today that maybe the storm that you're going through has a purpose maybe you're going through what you're going through because where you're going is bigger than where you are sometimes God has to cause some pain to get us to move forward God has to shut some doors in order to show us the blessings that he has for us. Oh, I wish I could get somebody that would get excited with me on today because we like to get comfortable in a stormy situation, but the storm is moving you forward. It reveals the purpose of God. Romans 5 and 4 says it this way, and not only so, but we glory in our tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patient and patience, experience, and experience hope. You won't even know where your faith is until you experience a crisis. It's the crisis that told, tells us who we are. May I deviate back a little bit? We just went through a crisis, a crisis about three years ago. We found out where the church really was and 
who was really a part of the church and who was really connected with Jesus because pre-COVID the churches were filled everybody was loving God but post-COVID hallelujah some things changed some people forgot how to pray they forgot how to have their worship God put us in position when this storm rose you had to get your own prayer through you had to preach yourself out of a situation you had to pray for your own family some of us never prayed for anybody we find ourselves laying hands on our children that were sick family members that were sick because God was bringing out something different to us there was a purpose in the storm the second thing is this and I'm gonna make y'all happy I'm almost done the storm reveals his presence in our lives uh, Jesus told the disciples to go to the other side that was a word from the Lord and while they're going on the other side the storm rose Jesus goes to pray but after Jesus prays he comes down and it's time for him to go to the other side but he does not have a boat it seems to me that Jesus would have said you meet me on the other side get in the boat I'll take this boat and meet you on the other side he never gives them an answer as to how he's going to get there neither does it say that they ask him well how are you going to get over there but Jesus comes down from the mountain praying and starts walking on the water to get to the other side. Y'all stay with me for one moment. May I suggest to you that there's a level of prayer that we should all be in. As I, I said to myself, well, if I pray a little bit more, maybe when they say I got bad credit, God will still open up a door. Maybe when they said that I'm sick in my body, I still know that I'm healed because of his stripes, because I've been praying. Maybe when they're trying to divide my church, I know my church going to stay together because somebody has been praying. I, I don't know who this word is for on today, but there's somebody that's going through something in their life right now. As a matter of fact, there's somebody that you might be sitting next to who needs to know that they're connected to somebody that knows how to get a prayer through. Because when I can get a prayer through, glory to God, I can pray a prayer that will help you get through your situation. I thank God right now that there's something about the power of prayer that can turn things around. I thank God that the blood still works. I thank God that God is still hearing our prayers. Come on, I wish I could get somebody to get excited right now and just tap your neighbor and say I'm praying for you I'm praying for you some of us are here right now because somebody prayed for us there was a song that we used to sing years ago my mama prayed for me had me on her mind took the time to pray for me some of us are still here today because we're still riding on the prayers of our grandmother and our mamas and our ancestors oh come on I wish I could get somebody that there were some things that was coming our way that was designed to destroy us but the prayers of the righteous they avail as much this is a necessary storm this storm is it unnecessary but this storm is necessary there are some storms that we face that are necessary for our progression in God I'm reminded and I'm not trying to take up too much time but the Holy Ghost is downloading some stuff right now I'm reminded of a time when Jesus was on the boat with his disciples and he was in the bottom of the boat chilling he was asleep and a storm rose and Jesus was on the bottom of the boat chilling out sleeping on sleeping in peace in the middle of a storm but the, the, the disciples was nervous and they said master don't you care we are about to perish Jesus gets up out of his sleep rubs a crust out of his eyes goes down I'm sorry I mean to step right there goes down to the bow of the boat and says peace be still and the storm ceases it seems to me that 
God would have done the same thing in this storm to just walk out on the water. And when he got to his disciples, he could have said, peace, be still. But he didn't. He let the storm rage. Because watch this. This storm was necessary. You see, he was able to rebuke the other storm. He rebuked that storm. Peace be still. But this storm, he couldn't. Because had he rebuked this storm, he would have been rebuking the will of the Father. So maybe this storm that they're in now is designed to bring something out of them. There are some things that you will go through that's designed to bring the best out of you. There's some things that uh, you've got to go through in order to be all that God wants you to be. This was a necessary storm. Can I help you with something? You've got to change your perception of what you're going through. Everything ain't designed to destroy you. Everything ain't designed to kill you. There's some things that are designed to teach you a lesson. There's a lesson in the storm. Jesus walks to the disciples in the storm, and he's about to pass them. They see him off in the distance, and they do not even recognize who he is. How do you be with somebody and not recognize who he is? Their question was, is it a, is it a ghost? Or, or is it God? It was their time to get a new revelation of God. Everything we experience in life gives us the new revelation of who God is. How can we say he's a healer if we've never been sick? How can we say he's a deliverer if we've never been through an addiction or a habit? How can we say he's able if we never had a situation where we felt like we was enabled? But what I love about it is this. The storm does not only reveal the purpose of God for my life, but it also reveals the presence of God in my life. I thank God while I'm going through the storm, there's a presence with me. I'm not by myself in it. As they was going through the storm, I felt like they probably felt rejected, probably felt like they were lonely. But they're going through the storm and watch this. Oh, I wish I could just share this. But they was walking through the storm with a blessing. Well, what do you mean they was walking through the storm or going through the storm with a blessing? They was riding through the storm with a blessing. They was on the boat with a blessing. Because one thing I forgot to tell you, and I, forget, I, I failed to tell you, that what happened right before they got onto the boat, they had 12 baskets left over from the two fish and five loaves of bread experience. And each of them had an abundance of what God was able to do. They had a reminder, oh God, they had a reminder in their possession of the miracles that Jesus was able to do. Because sometimes, amen, you got to begin to realize this. The, he, what he's already brought us through. It's enough to get me through the storm that I'm going through. He did it before he can do it again. If God said it, I can believe it. I can trust it. Oh, I wish I could get somebody that could give God praise in advance. You ain't got to wait till the battle is over. He's already done so much. Somebody lift their hands and shout hallelujah. Come on, we're giving God the highest praise. We're letting him know that we appreciate what he's already done. And no matter what I'm going through, if he brought me in, he will bring me out. The storm reveals his presence. And while they look at him and they see him, Peter says this. Peter says, let me come out with you. They've never seen nobody walk on water before. Never been written. Never been done. But Jesus is walking on the water. And all the disciples are looking, but only one says, let me come out with you. 
May I suggest to you that not only does the storm show us the purpose of God, not only does the storm show us the presence of God, but the storm also shows us the provision of God. And God is providing a way of escape. Well, what do you mean, Pastor Darren? What do you mean? Well, what I mean is this. Everybody's in the boat. The storm is raging. Their senses are connected to their environment. They can see the storm, hear the storm, smell the storm, taste the storm, and feel the storm. But yet they see Jesus walking in the water. And Peter says, I want to come. And Jesus says one word, come. Stay with me. There's something about a word from God. All I need is one word from God to deal with my situation. I thank God that when he said come, note this, he did not say Peter come. He said, come. That literally means to me that anybody in that boat could have stepped out and started walking on the water. Because he wasn't specific. The word was come. What I love about it is this, that when God speaks, everything has to come under subjection. When God spoke, Hydrogen said, we got to sharpen up. Oxygen said, we got to sharpen up. Y'all call it water, but I want to call it H2O. Because the very molecules that God created were still obedient to the voice of God. And the water positioned itself to not drown what was supposed to drown in it but to hold up the creator of it. That's why I hold on to this word that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper because I know the creator of every element that was created because the weapons were formed but they will not prosper. Oh, I wish I'd get somebody right there to give God praise. There were some things that was formed against me but it couldn't take me out. Huh? There were some weapons that was formed against me but they could not take me out. There were some things that was tailored to destroy me but it could not take me out. There were some things that tried to get my family to die but it could not take them out. COVID couldn't take me out. Hallelujah. Financial situations couldn't take me out. Why? No weapon formed against me. So Peter obeys the word. He listens to the word and steps out on the word. And I believe that it was the word that was holding him up. It was the word that was keeping him from drowning. It was the word that kept him from sinking. I thank God on today that COVID couldn't drown me stress cannot drown me rejection cannot drown me emptiness cannot drown me sickness cannot drown me because i'm standing on the word i'm walking on the word peter step out of the boat i want to encourage somebody sometimes you've got to leave people behind in order to get what god has for you peter stepped out while everybody else stayed in and started walking towards Jesus. Walking on the word towards the word. Because there was a word that just said, come. Peter walks on the water while everybody else is watching. You know what I learned from that? We've got too many boat rockers and not enough water walkers. We need some people in Bethany 
that know how to leave the 11 behind. And I'm going to start walking and trusting God. In other words, what I'm saying, if you don't want to praise him, don't hinder me. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. If you don't want to worship with me, it is all right. I present in my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is my reasonable service. I wish I could get about seven people that don't mind. Look down your row and say, listen, this is a praise row. I've got so much to be thankful for. I've got so much to give my God praise for. You don't know, like I know, what the Lord has done for me. When I was down, he lifted me. When I was broke, he fixed me with tears in my eyes. He wiped them away. I thank God for what he's doing. There's a song that says, was sinking deep in sin far from the peaceful shore very deeply staying within sinking to rise no more but 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 I thank God for the but everybody somebody look at somebody and say I thank God for the butt there's some good butts in the word of god but uh, the master of the sea he heard my despairing cry and from the waters from the waters from the waters he lifted me now safe am i if you don't want to go i'll go by myself i'll step it out I'm trusting God. I'm doing what he's called. I'm praising him. I'm loving him. I will serve him because he's been that good. Is there anybody that got a reason to give God praise? Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Open your mouth and give him glory. Hallelujah. Yeah! Yeah! He made a way. I'm still standing. Cause he made a way. I survived it. Cause he made a way. He's a way maker. He's a bearer burner. He's a low shifter. He's a keeper of my head. I thank God. I'm praising the one who's able to keep me from falling. Who is the King of glory? The Lord God, mighty in battle. I worship him. He keeps providing for me. Hallelujah. I know some of y'all looking at me like I lost my mind, but I really did because God has been too good to me. Some people like to praise him for the things that they get from God, but I need about 10 folk in here that got to praise just because they survived it, just because you survived the storm. Just because you made it through. If you're here today, if you're in Bethany today, you survived the stuff that was trying to take you out. You survived the stuff that was trying to destroy you. You survived the stuff that was trying to take away your praise. I dare anybody to begin to get to their feet right now and begin to walk on something that was designed to take you out. I'm walking in my anointing. I'm walking on holiness. I'm walking with a brand new heart. I'm walking on unforgiveness. I'm trusting God. I'm doing what God has called me to do. Well, 
I'm glad I've learned that he's a provider. And he's always been provided. He provided for Adam. He was a matchmaker. He provided for Noah. Gave him the love boat. He provided for Abraham. He was his Viagra. Y'all missed that. <laughs> provided for Sarah. He became her fertility doctor. He provided for Daniel. He was a lion tamer. He provided for the three Hebrew, the three Hebrew boys. He was a firefighter. Provided for Hannah. Hannah the seated. Provided for David. He was a war weapon. Provided for Mary. He was her baby's daddy. Y'all, y'all, y'all missing this. Provided for Nicodemus. He became a heart surgeon. Provided. Provided. All through the word of God, he provided. And even though you're going through the storm, they all went through storms. But God provided in the midst of the storm. Well, Pastor, what's the lesson we, we heard about? We, we know the storm reveals its purpose. We know that the storm reveals his presence. We know that the storm reveals his provision. But what's the lesson that we're supposed to learn from the storm? The lesson is this. You've got to learn how to walk like God. We've got to walk and not get distracted. So many of you are waiting for somebody else to walk before you start walking. Imagine if Peter would have waited for Thomas to get out. And Thomas would have waited for Bartholomew. Bartholomew would have waited for James. We would have missed the opportunity to know that I could walk to. And I hear Jesus saying to somebody, come. He's waiting for you to get out the boat. He's waiting for you to abandon ship. And stop being comfortable with the opinions of people. Sometimes our ships are filled with the opinions of people. We're so caught up on being like today. We don't even know people. If they delete our page, we lose our mind. Oh God, nobody loves me. If nobody likes my post, we cannot, we'll call people. I had people call me. You ain't like my post. What? Who has time to post all the time? You can play me out, because if y'all don't, I'm, I'm, you play me out, son. Yeah, there you go. You know, can I, can I challenge you all with something? If, if we can get our face in the book more than we put Facebook in our face, we'll go so much further. Well, what do you mean? We got to be in the book, Word of God. If we could put our face in that book and not so much put our face in Facebook, we spend more time how much time do you spend with God and how much time do you spend with Zucker? If you begin to evaluate, sometimes we get up in the morning before we say thank you Jesus, we got to look at it, we got to go on phone, what's happening in the world? God wants to change us. He wants us to love him. When you love somebody, you know you spend time with them. My, my generation, before we had Facebook, all we had was telephone. And I can remember, if, if y'all are with me, um, y'all remember how we used to talk on the phone all night and sometimes didn't say nothing? And we would lay there on the phone with the phone to our ear. Sleep? No, I'm still here. 
Well, you hang up. No, nah, you hang up. You hang up. No, nah, no, nah, you hang up. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Okay. You ain't hang up. I know I'm waiting for you to hang up. All right, let's hang up together on the count of three. One, two, three. You still there? I'm still there. Y'all remember that? Wouldn't it be nice to have that type of conversation with God? God, I don't want to hang up. I just want to hang out with you. I just want to tell you how much you mean to me. You know, Father, the closer I get to you, the more you make me feel. by giving me all you got. Your love has captured me. I'm going to my prayer closet now. Close the door. Y'all, y'all missing it. Well, there'll never be another love like this. God, because I never knew love like this before. I'm just talking about the ones that grew up on that. I don't know what they're singing now. But you know, David wrote love songs to God. That's all they were. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Or, Lord, you're my shepherd. Shall not want. Those are just love songs. Or songs of help. Father, just created me a clean heart and renew the right spirit. All God wants is our hearts. And we can't give him that unless we learn how to walk on the water and allow the storms of life to teach us how to draw closer to God. And you know, the end of the story is just this. When he got distracted and he started to sink, Jesus just reached down and lifted him up. Which lets me know I'm not in this thing by myself. And then he got in the boat. And when he stepped in the boat, the storm ceased because the class was over. And all the disciples said, truly, this is the Son of God. But they couldn't see it until they got into the storm. Sometimes you won't see him in a new revelation until you go through the storm. But beloved, there's a lesson in the storm. Put your hands together, magnify the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the word that has been released on this morning. And I pray, oh God, that some heart has been encouraged and someone has been strengthened, someone has been lifted up. Father, I pray that you will release an anointing in this place that will destroy every yoke. Devil, we serve notice on you today that every assignment that you have set out over this ministry and over these people has been canceled now in the name of Jesus. And we speak life in Jesus' name. Father, we give you all the glory. And let the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. What a word. I asked God to give me a word this morning. No, I'm serious. I really asked him on my way to church. I said, Lord, I, I need a word. And the pastor told me that my storm is necessary. Because in the storm, he reveals my purpose. He provides for me. But more than that, he makes himself present. 
Thank you. Thank you for the word. Anybody just glad on this morning that you found out that what you were going through is necessary for you, amen. This is the time when we open the doors to the church. You know, the church's doors are always open here at Bethany. But if you'll stand with me, we just want to invite those. It's okay? Do you want? Okay. Invite those. If you desire, those of you online, maybe joining us, you can just type it in the chat. We have our deacon. Brenda Brown, if you just raise your hand, our deacons, our trustees here, if there may be one on this morning. You heard this word. You're not a member of a church, but you heard this word and you said, you know, I, I didn't know why. I couldn't understand why I've been going through this, but you know what? Now I understand and I want to unite myself with a church that will keep me accountable in my storm. If that's you on this morning, if you're here, if you're online, then we invite you at this time to join this great church. Give Jesus your heart and give one of our deacons your hand Maybe it's not now. You may say, I'm here in the church, but I don't like crowds. I don't want to walk up now. But then after the service, we're always available to you. You may want to just stop by the church one day and say, you know, I've, I've been looking at that church down the street and I want to be a member. Then this is your opportunity. Maybe you don't desire to join the church but maybe you desire to be saved. Maybe you're a member of the church and you're still not saved. Listen, let me tell you something. It's good to be a member of a church, but it's better to be saved. The church can't save you, but the Bible declares that if you just believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus, that he was crucified and he died and that he was risen, then you shall be saved. What shall separate us from the love of God? Nothing can separate us. Not our problems and situations, not peril, no sword. Nothing can separate you from his love. And so if that's you on this morning, I ask that you bow your heads with me. As we recite this prayer, Lord Jesus, I, I want to know you better. Maybe even if I know you, God, after this message, I, I need a revival of you. God, come into my heart. Cleanse me, Lord Jesus. I need to know your presence. God, I need to know my purpose. And God, I need to know that you'll provide. God, I believe in my heart that you are the risen Savior. I believe that you died for me, and I, but I believe that you got up on that Thursday with all power in your hand. And because you got up, oh God, I desire to know you. Teach me, cleanse me, oh God, from all unrighteousness. This is our prayer. And if that's you, on this day, you've been saved. If that is you, you've been saved. Now this is the thing, you've got to work through your salvation. You've got to work through it. But Jesus can come into your heart and save you on today. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to close. I'm going to ask the pastor if he'll come back and do the benediction. Thank God for you, pastor. Let us pray. Father, we thank you all that has been said and done. Thank you for the people of God and for your strength upon their lives. As we leave this place, but never from your presence, we give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, and all the honor belongs to you. In the name of Jesus, and let the people of God say amen.
Amen and amen. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.